But sometimes the last sessions are very short. Um, I saw a chap, another therapist phoned and said, would I see this chap about anger management? Um, so I said, yeah, give him my details. And he phoned this guy, um, had blind rages. And he would knock his girlfriend unconscious, literally, and kick her around the house while she was unconscious, literally, and not know he'd done it, literally. Blind rage. And she would show him the bruises, and then he would know. His, and he came to see me, I taken the case history, I said, so why are you here now? And he said, because if you can't help me, I'm going to kill somebody. And he wasn't being melodramatic. That's the way it was. And I was sitting there on my own in my consulting room with this guy that was had a record for beating seven bells out of people, thinking, I hope I don't upset you. <laughs> the reason the other therapist wouldn't see him was she was scared. I said to her, why are you sending him to me? She said, I'm scared. And I thought, why shouldn't I be? Anyway, this guy ran a, uh, a utilities contractor, we'll say. Um, and his torso was like concrete. His hands were all calloused over the knuckles. He'd had done cell time overnight in police cells because of violence, fighting. Never actually been arrested. So no jail time. The cell time. Um, the guys, he was having difficulty retaining people in his business because he was scary. He was seriously scary. And he had these blue eyes and the bits in the middle are so tiny and piercing, he looked like the world's worst steroid victim. Mm -hmm. um, he was seriously scary. But not without his redeeming qualities, I have to say. Um, they were hard to find, but he had some. And one of which was, he said, he, first of all, he, he admitted what he was like. And he didn't try and make any virtue of it. He, he knew it was like that, and he knew it was bad, but he would snap, and then he didn't know what he was doing. He just, he just wasn't in control. He had no idea. It was not a conscious activity. Um, and he said, when I'm not like that, I think I'm a bit of a teddy bear. Which is kind of cute, really. This solid block of concrete teddy bear. Anyway, I put him on the couch, hypnotised him, got video motor responses, and said to his subconscious that um, from now on, he was going to assert his authority through the force of his personality, no, through the power of his personality rather than the force of his fists. There's a nice bit of alliteration there. Um, assert his authority through the power of his personality rather than the force of his fists. And, um, and otherwise be a teddy bear. And subconscious like the first bit, didn't like the second bit at all. Wasn't going to, no, didn't, wasn't buying this teddy bear thing. So I said, listen. This is my consulting room, you're on my couch, and you do whatever the hell I say. Get it? So, one of these days I will end up on some shrink's couch and they will work out where this latent death wish comes from. Anyway, I said, but, because I'm not a pushy type, I'll give you a choice. You can either accept to assert your authority through the, force, through the power of your personality rather than the force of your fists and otherwise be a teddy bear, or you'll have to make do with asserting your authority through the, force, through the power of your personality rather than the force of your fists and be a pussycat. Up to you, teddy bear or pussycat. I don't mind, I can do both. Entirely your choice. Funnily enough, he voted for teddy bear. So, I woke him up he sent him off and told him to buy his wife girlfriend some flowers on the way home. When I woke him up, the amazing thing was his pupils.
pupils had contracted. And his, his countenance had changed completely because it wasn't this tiny. They, they expanded, dilated. So it got bigger. And not because the lighting in the room had changed or anything like that. It was just, he looked different. And that was the most striking thing. Anyway, he came back a week later. And, um, and I asked him how he was. And he said, it's been great. He said, I bought the flowers. That was a normal experience, but I bought the flowers and, uh, and took them home. And he said, he said, the first thing my James said was, um, my eyes were different. And, uh, and she said, you know, I look much less hostile. And he said, um, and the other thing she noticed is I've not been swearing as much. Now, he hadn't sworn with me in the first session, but apparently every third word was an expletive, and it just stopped doing it. Now, I hadn't known it was an issue, and I hadn't said anything about it. I'd done, assert your authority, teddy bear. Um, so maybe teddy bears don't swear. I don't know, I'm not sure how that worked, but, um, but there, was, there was no more swearing. And if I'm honest, I didn't probably need to do any more work. But I did. Um, I worked with him in the second session and the third session because it was such a volt to fuss. It was such a big turnaround from somebody who was on the verge of doing serious jail time for murder to a guy who, at the end of the second session, I sent him to Kingston High Street to buy his girlfriend lingerie. I did. It's absolutely flowers. We start off with flowers. Second session go to La Senza on the first floor in the dental center or whatever it is and get us some lingerie. Um, so, which he did. Um, why? I mean, I don't usually pe set people home like that. It seemed like the right thing to do. Anyway, we went and did it. Um, and um, in the fourth session, I did about 15 minutes. Um, five minute chat when he arrived, 15 minutes on the couch, woke him up and I said that I felt a bit bad about charging him for the full session because he'd only been there for 20 minutes but that wasn't going to stop me because, you know, because I could have seen somebody else and charged a full session for you. And he said, Barry, don't worry about it. He said, what you've done for me is saved me tens of thousands of pounds. And I thought it would have been nice if I could have charged you tens of thousands of pounds then, but never mind. And that was it. I never saw him again. And about eight months later, the phone rang between my 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock appointments, and I answered it. And the woman said, is that Mr. Thane? And I said, Barry, yeah. And she said, hello, you don't know me, but my name's Jane. I'm Peter's girlfriend. And I thought, oh, relapse. Mm. And I said, hello, Jane, how are you? Of course I remember Peter. And she said, um, I just wanted to, I've been meaning to phone you for a long time. And I've never gotten around to it, I don't know why, but I just wanted to say that if I'd sent Peter to you with a list of things I wanted you to do for him, for me, he wouldn't have come back half as good as you sent him back. We're getting married in two months. Mm -hmm. 